Hi everyone and welcome to the Tormek Live Sharpening Classes and today's special episode where we'll be focusing entirely on your questions. And to answer your questions, I have invited the sharpening doctor himself, Wolfgang. Welcome. Welcome, Wolfgang. Welcome. Great. Uh, we have asked you, the viewers, to send in questions before the show, so we have a couple of questions. But uh, please ask your questions now live and we'll try to answer them as best as possible. Wolfgang is mo more prepared than ever to answer your questions, so if you have questions, now is the occasion. Uh, my name is Sebastian and I'm a country sales manager at Tormek and you may present yourself, Wolfgang. Yeah, Wolfgang is my name and I'm also sales manager for Central and South Europe. And behind the camera we have our friend Victor. Welcome, Hello. Victor. Thanks. Great. Uh, so I thought we would start with sitting down. It's not only because Wolfgang and me are getting older, it's <laughs> also we try a different concept. So we'll take a couple of questions here sitting down that has been sent in to us. Then we'll be Absolutely. moving over to the machine uh, when we want to demonstrate more on the machine. Uh, and we will intervene with the questions that you are asking live. We'll try to give them all attention possible. Great, uh, but we can start with perhaps a question that has been sent in. Um, and we often get these questions, we got it this time as well. Uh, but the question was, when, when you talk about Tormek being Swedish and that the, your products are made in Sweden, uh, is that true? And how Swedish is really Tormek? I would say very well Swedish. Uh, and uh, we're sitting here in the headquarter and even manufacturing. It's everything in Lindesberg in one, you say, block here. And uh, behind these walls is our canteen and then and lounge and there is our production and warehouse here. And so it's everything here. So everything is made with broad and tradition by hand also here. And we have just checked in a machine how much is Swedish and that machine is actual. 71% is Swedish. That means all the parts which we get from our suppliers, which are leading in that branch. So that means they are uh, top of the notch, uh, which we use their knowledge because we can't do it. So they deliver to us and this is in the same street or just in the next block in the village or a few kilometers around in South Sweden. So. The 71% uh, and 21% roughly is from Europe, which we can't source here in Sweden, and, uh, or there's no manufacturing at all. And around 8% is from Asia, that means like the Japanese stone is from Japan, or SVP is from Thailand. So, uh, and the jigs are 100% made here in Sweden. So. I think we can say that it's, we are, it's a Swedish machine. We design, we develop, product development, everything R and D. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can say right. is everything here and ours. We like to be transparent, and since we got the questions many times, we yeah. have uh, tried to break down the different parts and, yeah. and came to this. Maybe also, we can make a special in in the production hall. Some yes, maybe as we'll an idea, what, what, <laughs> what we can perhaps. do. Uh, that is not a bad idea. We had. Um, so every single machine, no matter where in the world you buy it, will have gone through and been manufactured here yeah. behind us. Uh, that's Go out of the same gate, every single machine, every single product. Great. It's one gate. Thank you, Wolfgang. Uh, now, a shorter question, but perhaps also not uh, needs a longer answer, perhaps. But this is a question we often get as well. How do I know at what angle to sharpen my knife? Well, there. One thing every knife manufacturer has maybe a certain ankle, and um, this is normally on the packaging. If not, you can just through the edge method, method, the Tomek marker, the edge as we showed in many of our knife sharpening uh, lessons and sharpening uh, classes. Yeah, through the edge marker method or the angle master, but you reply the exactly or the replicate exactly the same angle. Or you say, okay, I want to use this another brooch, that angle for that purpose. That means uh, for heavy duty, you can maybe a 30, 35 plus, or for a, a more delicate or such 
like a universal knife for vegetables, 25 degrees, and a fillet knife, maybe 20 or a little bit less. And the other approach is, depends on what steel you have. You have a, a thin blade, hard steel, you can go maybe a little bit thinner. It's much sharper, but the risk is that maybe break is higher. So it's always a combination between steel and for what you use the knife. So it's, it's not an easy question. Um, these are the, more or less the thumb rules. Or if you want to be precise, you want a sharp knife with a long standing time. That means each steel is different and has a certain angle. So it could be a good idea to try to reproduce the same angle as the manufacturer has on exactly, its knife. Exactly. Uh, uh, the most have the right angle, some they have some angle on it. But uh, we have a list on our webpage, I think maybe we will have also a link then underneath our description to a list where we have roughly, it's a living list, but roughly a lot of manufacturers with the recommendations of the angles. So Great, we'll ask marketing this. to put it in the commentary here below so they can, you can find the recommended angles for different brands out there. Good, we have a couple of questions that you, the viewers, have sent in now. So I'm trying to, I think we should uh, try to uh, take them intervene with them. Um, Aussie Crow is asking, does it make sense to use the coarse diamond wheel and then use the normal stone wheel when sharpening or should the diamond be followed by diamond only? No, you no. can use, as you said, you can go with the coarse diamond wheel, for example, because it's a little bit speeding up the process. And then you can go, for example, back on the standard stone. That is Absolute yeah, exactly, finest. so you remove material with the diamond course and then you get a finer finish with the original stone. Yeah, or you go from the fine diamond wheel back then to the Japanese stone. Yes. Absolutely no problem. The advantage with only using diamond wheels is that you will always have the same diameter. So every you setting don't. will be perfect when you change exactly. in between the, the diamond wheels. When you go to a stone... You have to adjust. Exactly, but it works perfectly fine. As a yeah. From the result, maybe even very good because diamond wheels create a little bit harder burr yeah. compared to a stone. Great. EDC Mo Mobile Sharpening is asking, my Japanese whetstone has chips on it, its edges. Can they be removed? Yeah, you can use the TT50, of course, to, but you lose a little bit of the stone. And you will anyway get small chips because the stone is very, very soft. Um, I would recommend, if you have small chips, take the SVP uh, 650, break a little bit uh, the, the edges, make a little bit of radius on it. That prevents a lot of chipping, even for sharpening and even catching. And yeah, this is, is at the end the best method. Just yeah. break off, and this is also Round recommendation. Off the edges a bit. Exactly. Uh, With all stones, I would recommend minimize also the risk for a catch, especially the Japanese stone. Great. Let's see if. We and maybe one addition also when you drew with the TD50, the Japanese stone, always from the outside to the inside, very slow, not too deep, not too much pressure, better two times or three times in the last maybe four or five millimeters, stop there, lift up the universal support and go then from the inside. We have an again. episode we recorded a while back uh, called the SVH320 and the TT50 and there we show in detail how exactly. to use the TT50 and also on the Japanese, Japanese water stone. stone not to crack uh, the edges. So that could be something for you who are interested. Uh, our friend Ken is asking, Wolfgang stated that he likes to use the SVM45 in the neutral position because he has developed muscle memory in that jig position. Many of us has, have usually all the carbon steel. No, it's another question from Ken as well. Uh. Absolutely, the memory, the muscle memory is, if you sharpen quite a bit and you're used to it, you can more or less blind, you've got the right feeling, you get a really good feeling to contact to the stone, otherwise you have to do change and adapt always. Yeah. And this is a personal thing, it's no right and no, no wrong, but I discovered for myself it is, I have always the same grip or two, three positions 
and uh, I feel comfortable and it's much easier. Then really I can use the cheek and then only a finger to, to lift. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we have our sister Mason. You mentioned replicator. Is that a new specific jig? If so, doesn't it help with the angle only or should help with the shape also? I think what we were talking about was the marker method. The method, marker uh, method. So when you, you color the bevel on, on the knife uh, with the yeah. marker, we also have that uh, a lot back in our old episodes, you can reproduce the same angle that was before. Um, so exactly. that was what we were... Yeah, you just scratch a little bit, you see, if you have to lower or to rise the universal support, or if the old knife chick, you can adjust. Uh, here we have another question from Ken. Many of us have usually all the carbon steel spindle gouges, often called continental gouges. These have a more shallow profile. Would you use, this, use the amount of swing of the tool to control this? Um, depends. Uh, I have maybe... I go, yeah, go to your, deep uh, in my... Wolfgang has his my toolbox, toolbox because with him. He's we never know. all your <laughs> different questions that might occur. What question is coming? So, uh, yes, I think we have it here. A little bit bigger. I go just in front of you. Yeah. And if Victor is coming, you see there these shallow European that's a little bit bigger. They're also smaller, but the shape is the same. And you look here from the top, this is much more a fingernail and this is more used as a roughing gouge. And this is more as a profile gouge. You see it's much more swinged on the side, but the adjustments are both the same. It's for example, the SVD 186 with the two in the, in the setting in the chick, 55 with the protrusion and in the whole B, and in both the same. That means here, I've go much more around, so I tilt much, much more than with that. This is just this other, the movement, how long and far you go on the side, makes in the end or determines the shape of your tool. This is uh, maybe the answer of your question depends how long you go or we visited uh, Glenn Lucas newly depends on the flanks on a gold gouge, a gold bowl oh, gouge. <laughs> now, uh, some you go maybe only up to 180 degrees, and some you go all down on the universal support, as a, a few degrees more. So that depends also on the shape of the gouge on the inside on the flute, because you have a little bit more V-shaped or U-shaped or like a sinus curve. Yeah. So this is. So you can alter the shape with the movement uh, very exactly. much indeed. But you Most will always have the same angle uh, and regulate that with the distance. Exactly. Yeah, to the universal support. And when you shape them, of course, you have to sharpen here more on the side in the beginning. It's not done with just moving around and you will end up with that shape. Yeah. You have really to try on both sides first to remove the material and then you get the shape. Great. Uh, there is someone appreciating our table. It's, thank you. It's a Swedish log. Um, Birch. <laughs> uh, yes, Inspector mm -hmm. 212 is asking, is the Blackstone intend intended for HSS tools? Yes, we've done it before, far be before my time I started, uh, because the standard or the original stone, you can do it also, takes a little bit longer and you will get more, uh, yeah, if you have a lot of bold gouges, for example, around the tools, you get a groove, you have to drew quite often. So the Blackstone was the next development, which is a little bit more aggressive, a little bit harder. So the deformation is not as strong as uh, with the ESG stone. And of course, for wood turning, then the diamond wheel is perfect because it's always flat and you can between bold gouge and chisels and skews. Exactly, Perfect. so the, the black stone was way better on harder steels than the yep. original stones, uh, but now when the, once the diamond wheels are here, they are even better, they are even harder, yep. uh, you could say. Um, and even if you go next <laughs> step uh, on, on drills, for example, yeah. the surface is so little, then it's no problem on the original no, stone, no. on the SG250 or 200, that works also fine. 
But if you have a lot of to sharpen or maybe bigger drills, then maybe the Blackstone has the advantage. It's also a question how much and how often you, yeah, sharpen. you sharpen. If you have the time, it's once a while a time, then it's okay. With the standard stone. Um, we have uh, Ali from the Netherlands. Any plans for a jig traditional paint scrapers and and or pushes piercing? Uh, uh, the, the paint scrapers they are very, as I understand, they're very small and they have the two angles. Yeah. Um, there are no plans at the moment, no. but you never know. <laughs> no, we're always looking to improve and, and find new solutions. Uh, I've done mostly with the knife jig. Yes, and then we'll see here. Um, now perhaps we should move over to the machine. I think uh, this is uh, a good. Uh, Michael Welsh is asking, when using the marker method, how much of the bevel should the marker be removed? Sometimes I find on the part next to the edge is removed. Uh, so I think we should what? show perhaps the, the edge marker method because uh, Problem we haven't been clear perhaps that you need to remove um, the marker the whole length bevel. of the bevel. If you take too high, then you're not at the wrong uh, you're at the wrong angle. And if exactly. you take only on the tip, you take you're at the wrong angle. But if you have the, if the hand the palm is the bevel you want to sharpen, and you are too high with the universal support on the stone, then you sketch only the tip. Yeah. So then you have to lower the support that you really scratch, complete the bevel. If you just hit the heel, then you are too low and yeah. you have to rise up. So that you complete with the complete bevel, you have to remove the, the All color. along the bevel, if exactly. and then, then you're at the right angle. Yeah, exactly. And if you have a brand new tool that hasn't been sharpened on the Tormek, which, which will always be a bit uh, concave, then you have to aim for the middle of the bevel exactly. because if it's a perfect flat line the first time and then you won't be able to remove all along the exactly. bevel but then you aim for the middle of the bevel yep um, that's correct great michael or if you have a convex bevel then it's also the middle yeah because then it lies in the middle and then you grind them down yeah michael seemed to be satisfied with your the answer good michael thank you um I think we go for questions that have been sent in uh, from before. Um, and I think perhaps we should move over to the machine. We have been sitting long enough. I think it could be good to, to demonstrate a bit. So if I'm stopped walking, it was nice to be sitting down, but now we go to the practice. Yes. Uh, Hans Maasens from the Netherlands is having a knife with waves in the bevel um, after having sharpening it with a hand sharpener uh, and he also has a bolster in the way then we take at least directly this knife and he wants to know how to resolve this issue there are the most when a hand sharpener or even even uh, people of you experience with the Tormek you have sharpened a few times you get here uh, a deeper um, mostly they used more here mm. uh, and then goes that like an S curve. That happens when you not touch the stone in the beginning, a little bit too much here or too much on that side because the edges are aggressive. You see they're not rounded here, so I would break them down with yeah. the 650. And then really take your time to land without any pressure, really that you have to water all over and land on the stone and then apply pressure to get it straight. But to repair it, there, of course you can sharpen first these parts because you have the deepest part is at the end on all the, na uh, the knife, the line. The easiest way is use the outside on the stone. You can do it brutally freehand like this because you have a nice long surface to, to lay on to repair the shape. When you use a stone, you can do it a few times, but you will destroy, of course, the outside. The diamond wheel is there much better because it stays always flat. Or you can use even, uh, we have the MB100. You can go over. 
We have explained this also in one of our, I think, knife sharpening. Yeah. You can see there in, in detail when we do it. But it's, a, it's good to, you have to put it back to zero, so make it perfectly flat. Because if you keep sharpening and try to compensate the, the, the curve in the knife, it will only it will become worse and worse. Worse and worse, uh, and you don't know where you end up at no. the end. It's much easier to go on the, uh, on the outside. Yeah. If you have the possibility, and uh, just, just a quick for you, the new knife jig. Uh, straight forward this line more or less the same so you see it's not totally parallel to the back it's a little bit adjusted in that way you want the same distance from both edges on the jig to, to the, the, edge. the bevel so don't make with a ruler just yeah more yeah it's that's not makes that it a little bit easier yeah. for for the shape for the knife and then you go in that way so okay we can have to go a little bit upwards And you see, you have really a good long, and then you can sharpen and repair in the long way. And the angle for repairing, it's not as important at the moment. You can go quite a little bit more out, for example, if you want. But then you have to establish the new bevel in the right angle. Yeah. And then you do this through the distance here. When you have repaired it, you can go back and do it on, on the, the classic way or you finish here it's also possible on a diamond wheel and it works the, fine. with the bolster that is in the way sometimes yes uh, here also a it's a little bit bigger and with the time you come down and down and then this is in, in the way i go always in that direction you see the stone is going away from me from this freehand just modeling um, away nicely round and it looks nice and then you can even polish it on the leather wheel. So just make it shorter because when you cut chives, you want to really cut through and not having the stop no. because mm. this is in the way. Great. Uh, Doson is is asking. You have well, he's mentioning all our different types of wheels. Which is the best steel grinding wheel? Um, that is difficult. They all work perfectly well for steel grinding. If you if you mean grinding by removing steel, then I would say the DC 360 is the most efficient and takes um, for More. harder steel and HSS steel. That is great. exactly. The SG is just a polishing wheel, so just for a mirror finish. Um, but all all steels works pretty much on all even here stones. So uh, exactly. This is the only thing he will remove, get also a little bit smaller, yeah. faster, removes even the sharpening stone with harder steels. And even steel is, this is a, you have, depends on how the steel is hardened. Yeah. For a kitchen knives are mostly about 67 up to maybe in 69, uh, 59, sorry, not 60, um, 56 or up to 59, the most kitchen knives, yeah. rarely above. Uh, outdoor knives can be about maybe 58, 59 or over 60. Mm. You can sharpen them all even on the, on the original stone. Uh, if you get the feeling it takes a little bit too much time, switch over to the black stone or to a diamond wheel. Mm. Because diamond is hard. It's as bit as you say, if you only have harder steels, then of course the diamond wheel can be interesting. Absolutely. But if you have one knife that is really hard steel, then it's, you don't Takes need to invest in a, in a diamond wheel. Three, four minutes more, yeah. maybe. Depends on, also on the damage and how big uh, the knife is, how much material you have to remove. Uh, uh, someone is in marketing is correcting me. Obviously, I said something wrong. Yes, the ST, uh, Japanese S water stone is for polishing. Good. Thank you, Hugo, for having, uh, having my back. Uh, great. Michael Edwards is asking, how long will the truing tool last? Oh, I think quite a while. Yeah. Also the, the diamond tip, you can remove it if it really down. Um, it is finished when it's more or less, uh, when it's even with the surface here. Yeah. Of course, also when that tip is gone, you have to remove it and you can remove it very easily. Just here, it's already on the right position. Take an uh, Allen key 
open the screw, remove it, put the new in, close yeah. it again. You can buy it as a spare part, the diamond and tip. Yeah, absolutely. And that lasts us. We test them yeah, here when we get all deliveries, when we get them. We have a machine, it's just grinding down old stones, which are not, yeah, not uh, okay for selling. So in average, about three stones, we just grind down from yeah. all the way. So this will last. It, it, it's a replacement part, the diamond tip, but we don't so, sell a lot of them. So that no, means that they, they last. They last, well. exactly. Uh, Andrew is asking, the SDS 50 holder has a marking up to 45 degrees. However, if it's set to 45 degrees, it doesn't fit correctly on the universal support. Um, um, SDS 50. 50. When is this set it. to 45? I have to check it yeah. <laughs> because it is up from the front. Yeah, open. It doesn't. Uh, okay, he means because the in the maximum edge, it is. Oh, I've got more than 50, 45. This is 40, 45. It's a little bit short before. I was a little bit too... Because it's not exactly all the way in, so you will have a little bit of space here. Maybe it depends how you look in. I'm always looking in flat in here, and then I tilt it as long as exactly the surface is vanishing. I have one line to get uh, the 45 marker degree, and then you end up, it's a little bit tight, but you still, it's not in here, so you have to be really... So it's possible, here. but yeah. you, uh, important That's is to look straight into the 45 degrees, yeah. so probably you, you are a bit over the over. 45 degrees. Exactly. Uh, and that's your... Because it's, it's correct, it's very tight here, so you have to really have to have an eye that you are really close pressing the tool against it. Great. Uh, Milos Mitrovic is asking, when will we be able to buy the symmetrical knife holders in the US? Uh, I guess he the means S the KJ45 and the KJ140, the centering knife jigs. Deliveries went out, should be soon. Hit yes, I market. think it's, they have said June, uh, oh. end of June or beginning of July. So I think yeah. it should be any, any time now. Uh, but you can send your questions to support at tormec.se and we will get in touch with our US office and they will have an even better answer for you. Exactly. Uh, Michael Weiss says, I use the leather honing wheel freehand. Sometimes it seems to make the knife duller. Is there a technique that works best freehand? I would rather have to have not to set the angle with the jig. That's, uh, the jig is of course the most secure. Yeah. The other thing is, uh, that straining, I always, there are two ways. Uh, I think you use another, or Matthias, my colleague, yeah. use another way than I, but there, there are two ways to do it. Um, one way is, as I do it, I go on the side and then I lift up uh, until I, get, yeah, of course, yeah. So the camera sees better, maybe I, do it here. I go from the back so I don't touch the tip and then why it is not sharp at the end is there are two reasons. You are too flat, you have not reached the bevel, uh, the, the burr, so there's still the burr there, therefore it's dull or you went too much, then you round off the edge of course. So this is the, the art, a little bit draining to get not make it too fast because when you fast then you may be a little bit too unprecise. What I do also my hand here on the body, uh, we showed it quite often, good stand behind the machine, flat, tilt it up and then you see, and of course a good light, then you see the small parts go away and then really try to as slow as possible go over. Then you see here that color. Here's the color also here. 
we try to we say go back and then over then you see the small particles and then you see the burr because the ladder you see the lines coming up and then you see I hit it really good you still the black on the on the the side of the knife is there I would say it's way more common that you don't hit the bevel than you round off the edges yeah, because, because to round it off you have really to be off uh, quite very off, much yeah. off I think a good tip could be to color the bevel, use the marker method as we do on sharpening, but on also for then honing, because then you get an instant res response on that you actually are hitting the bevel. So if you color the whole bevel exactly. before honing and then you hone, you will see mm. where you have yeah. missed your Exactly, honing. you see really precise where I've hit it here. This one thing. And the other method was you hold it here quite really on top and then you go a little bit back because you have to round it until you get the small particles. Personally, I don't prefer this. I think it's a little bit more difficult. But you see, even here, I hit the bubble. This is a little bit training, of course. Yeah. There's, there's only training way or you use the chick. There, there are two ways. Great. Uh, we have a 3D Anvil says that the KJ45 is already av available in the US. Great. So Great. then. Maybe not at every retailer. No. Uh, we are not responsible for the US, so we, have, we are not the. We don't have the knowledge that we should have, perhaps. Um, we got a question from Richard Dunmore, who is also in my papers. You sent in the, the question, right? Um, so the. And you're asking it again. It's great. Uh, we were coming to you uh, for your questions, Richard. But we'll take them right away now. Uh, I have a new and old chisel and a plain blade with slightly convex back, uh, backs, uh, the polished flat side. How do I flatten them using a Tormek? And also he asks, he has a T7, and he asks mm -hmm. if the T7 machine uh, is... Absolute measurements, everything the same to the T8. Yeah, but are there an advantage just to go for the T8? Or no, the T7 has it's the exact same possibilities when it comes to flatten the chisels. The advantages exactly. are perhaps the sink housing that won't rust yeah. and the, but for the water throw and here everything is casted. So the precision is maybe a little bit better than the T7 because it's mounted. It was laser guided, everything, but still you have to mount things and then it can over the years maybe we haven't heard it, but this is now much, much more precise. But it won't but affect you flattening your absolutely. chisels on the side. What I do is just go down with the universal support to get a nice position for you that you can put your hand here and then you take the chisel and then really flat on it. And then you can really, even you can go a little bit closer if you want. So. Just don't touch the stone. And then you, just on the outside, you can really nice sharpen it flat. And then, of course, you can use even on the outside the um, SVE P650 with the fine side. Make it a little bit finer and then you have really to, to polish it very well because it's a mirror side. It should be uh, a mirror finish at the end because if you have the scratches in there, it's like when you look to the edge, you get not a perfect edge at the end. So this is white, also called mirror uh, side. Should like a mirror polish the better the edges, of course, because it's more or less the future edge. Yes. Because this is only the bevel on the see the edge. So this is the only and uh, the fastest way. Or of course, again, diamond wheel, it is consistent from the outside. Great, thank you. Luke Graulers is saying, I always forget to to water the traditional grindstones. How long does it, do I, does it have to be in the water before using it? Just, uh, you will see when you pour water in, start the machine, uh, it's roughly 1.2 liters. Something like that, yes. Uh, fill in and you have a line, so don't overfill it. Maybe also Ken for you the, the answer. He put the answer per email to me, uh, the over flooding. Yeah. We can answer in that same way because it is running over on the inside. So don't overfill to that line. 
filter to the line, wait for 10 seconds. The you will see it will drink a little. Uh, it soaks water. up immediately. Yeah. Um, you fill up a little bit more until the level is okay. Then it takes maybe a minute, one and a half, two minutes. Then the stone is soaked. You don't need to wait five minutes or whatever because it will slowly go back again. Yeah. Uh, but it soaks up very, very quick. And um, you don't need to go all the way up until you nearly touch the stone. You, you just touch in the water surface inside and you have the water film on the stone. That's it, that's enough. So then you have not uh, overspill because when you go too far again and then there you have is, to spill on the inside. There is never a risk for the engine when it gets uh, wet. It's Th that, that's just no coming problem. out here and you have it yeah. on the table or here in the universe, uh, the RB180 in the rotating plate. The worst thing that can happen is that you get water on the driving wheel and then the, the machine would spin, but then yeah. you just dry it off with the cloth and, and you're good to go. Exactly, again. and it's getting a little bit warm anyway here. It's very very fast uh, gone and the spill water from here is not coming over it's more when you sharpen maybe in that way they meant Canada before uh, for the KJ45 sorry I did see the flag um, so I don't know about Canada it's we have the same in, um, but office but should be also more or less yeah any day now but send in the questions and we will answer them in, in the email uh, Great. Um, let's see. Yeah, jo Joel asked, how do I best measure the grinding wheel's diameter? Um, At the end, um, you have to uh, turn around. Depends how exact you need it, because we know some use the, the software, then you have really to measure really exactly f over the center, over the centrum. But depends, maybe the stone is not perfect round. After a while of sharpening, then it goes a little bit up and down. So this is a little bit um, unsecure if you need absolutely perfect measurement. Otherwise, for um, your uh, knife, uh, for the VM200, for the angle master, because you have to adjust here uh, the diameter of the stone, it's absolute enough when you check from above inside here you see 245 is here and 250 it's a little bit even over when I take here you see you can take flat here here underneath this line even so this is the 250 if you go closer then you have to remove a few millimeters more or then in here just refer over great thank you Andrew is talking about the tilt feet that there were on the T7, which made that you could tilt the machine a bit uh, to avoid the spillage. Uh, they are not available on the T8. You but could, you of course, put something underneath it to, to high, make it a bit higher. Yep. We removed it because we didn't find the use to be enough, really. Uh, yep. It didn't make that big of a difference, so we cho chose to remove them. A little spill here on top. Uh, it happened also in the old machine, but here you have no risk for water here. This is watertight here, the, the, the contact, and it's no rust anyway, and then you have to hedge it a little bit. Yeah. If you have too much water, I make something a little like this, and then it's flowing in there again. Uh, we have Daito Camera is asking, I use a 100 volt T4 in Japan. The main body gets very hot. How uh, can I use it for a long time? Uh, I would say if you, the critical temperatures, I think around 157 or so, mm. which start to, from there it start to get risky for the, for the motor, but then you can't, you can't touch it because if you're already about 60 degrees, you experience as hot. Yeah. Because you nearly can't touch it with no. 60 degrees. So this is absolute no, no yeah. problem. Uh, and even if it runs without um, pressure, it's even strangely a little bit hotter than when you use it. Yeah. For the T4, we have uh, the uh, certificate for around a half an hour. Yeah. And then it is not like a half an hour in use in one hour and then a half an hour break. No. Because you don't sharpen with full pressure for 
continuously for an half an hour because oh. you sharpen, you take away, you check, you maybe change the tool. And also to, to break already the, uh, the, the cycle. Yeah. This is also a half an hour means really a half an hour in full uh, where we guarantee. And but also this was more important on the older machines with the T3 which when there were plastic on top yeah. and then the plastic could melt or get um, yeah. and even now we have a zinc top on the T4. It's no so problem. And the temperature, uh, I think it was 157 yeah. or 58 so it's degrees. quite high. So you, you can stake your <laughs> or fry your eggs on the machine so there, there's no risk absolutely not great anthony rice is asking hello from main usa how to sharpen shorter japanese chisels and plain irons sometimes uh, the jig hits the stone before the chisel, chisel edge does uh, one thing is of uh, japanese chisels you can sharpen here too depends on that part here in, in some tools in uh, Japanese yeah. because then you really hit the stone uh, because with the, the cheeks but normally it should not a problem I have somewhere in there from violin makers the planer blades they are very short very short and I do them also on, on uh, but you have another option if they really are too short then you, you can have use the Uh, the SVS 38 and then you come even closer yeah, because uh, it's very it's much smaller oops you can go in there really really clamp them quite shortly that means to get the right angle then of course because then you set the under the flat side underneath to, to get the right angle in the middle here Great, so if you have really short Japanese chisels, that could be the, the way to go. Yep, it's also possible. Peter sent in a question before uh, the show, um, and he had, uh, had the question to sharpen a double-sided dagger. Uh, since the, the blade is tapered, edged on both sides, mm -hmm. there was no way to secure the knife jig, either by the blade or by the handle. Any ideas how to do this? That's a tricky question. If I understand, I go just on the, the board. When I suppose he means in the, when you make a cut through the, to the dagger, it has maybe some bloodline here on top, and then it looks like more or less, oops, uh, I'm, I'm not a good painter, so like this. And then you have here the edges on the side. So you, the, the blade is like when you cut. And then you have here the this side and this side you have to, to sharpen both sides. That's tricky because uh, it's difficult, difficult to, to, to clamp. It depends how big it is, maybe it works with the SVM 00 over the handle. Yeah, he said it was difficult to clamp in the handle. Also well, yeah. maybe too, too high. I think there are some limitations for everything. Yeah. This is the thing is also with the dagger, you don't want it to cut it cut as a knife. It's only <laughs> supposed to be sticking. Yeah, exactly, in. because the angles are not really so flat, they no. are a little bit more. Most daggers works, but if it's really like like you draw your drawing, mm. it could be complicated uh, to yeah. have a good solution on it. As maybe when you come with a cheek and you can reach then inside, but this very short is very difficult sometimes uh, what I've seen you can do if you have a few of them to have a like a parallel clamp or so which yeah. you can manufacture for yourself which you can maybe then stick into the the, uh, the knife jig as an adapter more or less this is sometimes a little bit tricky Great. or freehand then uh, for some tools if there's no way, in, even if you use other cheeks and try to use them, sometimes it's really yeah, the only way. Great. Th uh, 3D Anvil is asking how often should the T8 bearings be greased? How often? As a, I would say depends if you do sharpening like a service every day in, from mor morning to the evening. Maybe twice a year, every six months a little bit grease on it. 
otherwise just yeah, once a year. Don't well. use oil because oil is ra uh, running away and then the dirt is coming in. So use grease because this is more or less tightening. Great. Uh, we have had a question that was sent in from a Finnish friend. He, he says, hi, it's from Jukka then. I'm a T8 user. I like the machine a lot. You can do a wide array of sharpening jobs with it. Anyway, there is one issue I like to point out, uh, more, uh, want you to point out more clearly. Safety. Safety, yeah. There's, I would say, a few things about safety. The machine is very, very slow. Yes. So um, you have, for example, when you're a beginner, use the safety screws we have here. Because I want just to show maybe the, the, the chisel in here, what happens. It is not dangerous, but it hurts a little bit and um, it's a little bit more pain. Otherwise, it's no risk. This is uh, maybe the, the most dangerous. <laughs> oh, whoops. Use these security bits and parts here on the on the cheek because here you don't fall down and you use it on that side too so you're always on the stone because if you don't use them so the angle is not correct either just um, to show you here yeah, it's a little bit dry when you sharpen here and you don't have uh, take this away and you talk and don't watch and then you fall down and then you come here with the edge that hurts because the, the edges are quite aggressive they also always say round it off a little bit uh, then nothing happens and uh, of course if you get with a knife a catch it makes it quite it feels like a big hack it because you take it up automatically by uh, yeah, it's a little bit frightened. It feels more than it really is. It doesn't happen to anything. Um, I would say that generally people are a bit too afraid of the Tormek because it really they they are used to a bench grinder which goes mm. up to a thousand RPMs per minute. Much more dangerous. Than and here the the stone yeah. is not dangerous. You can touch it. It yeah. goes very slowly. And yeah. even if you get a catch, nothing bad will happen. It happens like um, this. But that's so, it. so it's a very safe machine. Then, of course, when you sharpen, you use um, tools falling down. Step Make aside, it. yeah. Don't try to catch it no. because then, then you cut you. And that, I would say, is the most rule. common issue we see with safety, that there are sharp tools and people try to catch them when they lose them, either with their hands or with the feet. So just back away. Uh, exactly. But otherwise, it's a, it's a super safe machine and it's... Um, even if you get a catch, or I even had sometimes when I had a greasy chisel, it's flying out of the jig, but nothing, it runs nothing so slowly, so nothing will get thrown no. towards you or, or damage you, you that way. You don't need so. Googles or some protection gear like you should use for a bench grinder, mm. but in 99% you don't see any apron, no Googles, nothing. I've experienced one stone was bro breaking, it was a not a high RPM, but it cuts mm. through here and break the, the, the nickel bone. That uh, will never happen on. with the Tormek, and you will never produce sparks either. So it's, it's, uh, yep. it's a safe machine overall. Exactly. In Italy, for example, it's the only machine which is allowed to have in a uh, wood workshop yeah. because there's no sparks. Otherwise, everything has to be outside. So it's, they're really safe, and they are all CE certificates on the machine. So we have this in Sweden and in other countries in schools, children, and of course everything rotating. Don't have a tie because then you or long hairs. You should have these are the, the basic rules in a in a workshop. But the machine is very popular in schools due to its safety. safety. Uh, so exactly, it's, it's, uh, that's a good. Uh, uh, Matte the Great is asking, hello guys, I'm considering to buy one of your machines for home use to sharpen knives. What should I buy, the T4 or the T8? So, personally, <laughs> I would go for a T8. Yeah. You have one centimeter more. Depends how much you sharpen. If you just sometimes a knife, the T4 is a perfect uh, do yeah, the for, job. If well. you only be sharpening knives, then the T4 works because as have, good as a T8. I would because say got, because you get also the Japanese stone. Yeah. I'm a fan of the Japanese stone. Yes. My it's labeled 
maybe over <laughs> over the top, but but um, you you end up there some in in, yeah. <laughs> in some way, um, and then it's the point where it's getting to sport or which is uh, yeah useful. So you have these stones for both machines. You have also the diamond wheel for both machines. My experience is if you say just the kitchen knives and then check if you have a little bit of workshop, you have a little bit chisels, you have a little bit more tools, then maybe you have to rethink then, <coughs> sorry, T8 uh, is maybe more useful for you because it's a little bit stronger, it has one centimeter more. Uh, even the motor, industrial motor is uh, just brushless, it's maintenance free, 25,000 hours, T4, 10,000 hours. Even if you sharpen every day for the T4, it is 27 years mm. for one hour every day. So you will outlive, or the machine will outlive you. It's two great quality machines, and since the T4 was launched, it's way better than the T3. T3. Now it has its same top, so for Precision knives, the T4 works perfectly. So both are great machines. Uh, then, as Wolfgang say, if you find more tools than knives, then perhaps that you will feel it's a more complete machine, the T8. Also, you have the square edge jig included, included. and the TT50 included. Exactly. This, this when the T4 is coming, just the actual machine. Um, these are in the T8 already included. Yeah. In, in some point, you will need to buy this. If you have chisels, then you need any way to buy this. Then the question is, okay, then there's maybe a different, depend on the markets, roughly around in euros. Uh, um, what is around 130 euros in average between if you think you have twice as much material to sharpen in, in, the, in that stone here, 250 yeah. stone compared to a 200 stone and when you sharpen quite a lot then with the second stone on the T4 you have end up in the same value and you have still a half, a half a stone here left so it's on the long run it's even cheaper and more possibilities yeah. so this is a little bit the question i, I don't know if think. you became any wiser mate uh, but uh, the, the, there are a lot of things to take it but i'm sure no matter which machine you use you have eight year warranty it will last for a super long time exactly. and you can sharpen everything on both machines yep. so um, it's it's up, up to you maybe there's some ideas in the we have done the live sharpening glass about the comparison of the machines yes. maybe that could check help this. you yeah, yeah exactly where we present decision on all the machines and uh, george Ehring is uh, asking about flattening the back of the chisels uh, or plane blade which we showed a bit earlier i don't know if you tune in later uh, on the side of a diamond wheel, <coughs> and if so, uh, would be doing compare is it in any difference comparing to flattening on the side of a T4 or a T8? Uh, no, exactly, same. exactly the same. It's just a diameter. Great. Uh, Michael is saying the one thing that uh, has been impossible with the T8 is sharpening lawnmower blades. It's too long. Um. Um, so just um, one lower plate, these. I've done this before. Yeah, I, I've done open. it as well. We, ha we have a gardening special. Of course, exactly you can take lawnmower blades. They look very different. Sometimes they're sharpened the whole length. Right. Sometimes Some just only the shorter uh, pieces. Often what's common with the lawnmower blades is that they are very badly damaged. <laughs> uh, exactly, it takes a while. But the, the steel is mostly very soft also. Yeah, so it should be quite... Uh, Roughen up the stone with... The, if you have the, the original stone with the SVP, 650 is a stone grader with a rough side over the edge, make it a little bit rougher, because they don't need even totally polished. No, no, exactly, you don't... Because if you see how a lawnmower blade looks normally, no. it's it doesn't cut at all. So just making it a bit more... It doesn't have to be sharp as a knife, and you will exactly. still have a... It's because it's the speed also. Yeah. Um, and with, yeah. CBV double X34. Can you sharpen a knife on a T8 and then maintain it on a T1? Yeah, of course. Yes. When you do have established the bevel, like for example, like 15 degrees or 17 or 12.5, you have sharpened here. You have the bevel, and then you just on a T1, you are just Set to the, the, the same angle. And also you can maintain it only on the honing wheel of the T1, uh, like Absolutely. with kitchen knives, you perhaps have to sharpen twice a year, but you can go home six, 
eight times a year. Well, we have the, the fortune that we can use all the machines. So when yeah. I have, for example, a little bit damaged knives from, from friends, or now really, uh, rarely my own ones, but from friends, sometimes I do it on the, on the T2. It's the same principle like the T1. I have not sharpened yet, damaged on, on the T1, but on the T2, it's, a, it's the same principle. First on the rough diamond, and then took the same and finished here with a Japanese stone. That's absolutely no problem. Great. Uh, I think we're starting to wrap up things. We have time flies when you have fun. We have been doing mm -hmm. an hour almost now. Um, if you have any last questions, there we have. Yes, yeah, sorry, Arian submitted this via email. But the best way to sharpen a scrub plane dates with big cambers. The SC77 doesn't have the range. Yep. That is also, we have a question with, from yes, it's the email, more or less the it, same it's question. The same. Lee Nielsen with the extreme radius. Yes, that is Aaron. I, I missed it here. I have it here and I have it on the. Thank you, Aaron, for reminding me. So, there's the only way. Yeah. You go from this side and you have to do it manually. That's the only way. It's like scrapers in a wood turning, uh, for example. This is not maybe it's the perfect example, but it's also shaped. Then you go up here, you have to take the tool and have just to follow. And here you take the distance, don't touch the stone, get as close as possible. And you can, you the marker it. method, yeah, exactly. the bevel, and then find the angle. I think a little bit here. Risk is you have really to hold it back because uh, not close enough, or a little bit closer. The risk is because the rotation of the stone is in that direction that it will pull up you when you add too much pressure. So you really do have to hold it stable here. The other method is if you go to the vertical position, then you have just to turn around because then you get, it's easier than you can press down and follow it. It's like yeah, also the stone the will be pushing the tool into the support, yeah, which makes it easier to hold. Push, pushes up. So these way are possible. Personally, even for scrapers, I use that method because you have the pressure there. It's easier to control than when you pressure and it draws you up the stone. So this is easier. And I think also we have the the the, the question for the scrapers uh, had today. It's exactly the same as I showed here. Um, it's freehand, it's maybe a little bit difficult to get the shape, but it's, the steel is quite hard. Even Lee Nielsen's planar blades, uh, it's the... Yeah, he, want, he wanted also to know about the, the skew angle with the SC77 square edge jig. Um, uh, on a, uh, yeah, exactly, for the, where the, the planar blade is not straight. Yeah. We have the, just don't use the side on the, where are we, the SC... SE77, when you put your planar blade in there, normally you use it here the side. I know, yeah. I know. Just adjust it inside. And then I would go for, where's the little edge marker here? There. Take a little, uh, thank you, uh, carpenter square and make a 90 degree line on it. Uh, I think you have the cap bar. Uh, what do you want? Yeah, uh, just to. Uh, do I have the. No, I thought the, the cap for. Yeah, I have it. I have it. I <laughs> okay, have it. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, this way. When you use it. Now, this is not, of course, not that tool. We don't have it here, but it's also rounded. But as you see, you can adjust there here. And you adjust just your edge to the line, and then through the heights you find your angle. So you don't put it straight in; you put it uh, laterally, exactly, and, and then, then you can have as and then we fix it. Any angle is possible. Exactly, and then you have it fixed, and then you go with the edge marker method, yes, or with the angle master through the heights, get the right angle, and then just. Great. Uh, GMA is asking, do you ever use the best sharpeners, sharpness tester? Uh, we have tried one uh, and we play around with it every now and then, but really it doesn't, 
we don't like using it as a test of quality because when when you cut, you cut on one particular point of the bevel, so you don't feel if the entire bevel is well sharpened. Also, um, depending on how you use it, when you try it, you can cheat, or if me and Wolfgang measures the same knife, we will get two different results. And not a few, sometimes quite a bit uh, Yeah, difference. a big difference. Uh, um, so it's a bit technique. If you want to have a good result on it, you can cheat. Um, so we don't recommend it as a, a it does it can in, of course it's it says something about how sharp it is but it did that don't tell you the whole truth so we exactly. try to avoid it um, exactly for it's not the the answer to you may be out after because you can cheat or not and it's a little bit yeah. We tried in many ways we are not it's quite not happy precise. there yeah, are other exactly. machines that are more precise where you cut but they're through papers and yeah but there are uh, more expensive than the best uh, exactly and then the question is is a hobby sharpener uh, to put that amount of money for yeah. a result which is and also the, the, the smaller angle you have the better result you will get on the best sharpener but yeah. perhaps your knife will your bevel will break uh, in yeah. just cutting one it's into the cutting board yeah. so it, it tends people to put two small angles as well to get as good results so as possible. And then you use the knife for something different than maybe not the right cutting board or... No. It's, a, it's an endless discussion, I think. Yes. There are people for and against. We decide for us. It is not that result what no. we expected from it. Great. Thank you, Wolfgang, Mr. Sharpening Doctor. Uh, I think we covered we try to answer most of your questions. Uh, hope you enjoyed. If you have any more questions, please ask them in the commentary below and we'll try to answer them afterwards. If you have more complex questions about specific tools and so forth, please send a picture of the tool to support at tormac.se so we'll see the tool. It's easier to answer that way. Absolutely. And we'll try to answer that way. Uh, we're going on a small summer holiday break. Wolfgang is going to lawn his mo uh, to make his garden perfect shape. Baking uh, bread and whatever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we won't be back until this autumn. We really appreciate you watching and asking questions and interacting with us. It's great fun meeting you there. And also now after the pandemic, it's fun. I was in a wood show last week in France and a lot of you viewers came and I got to see you live as well. So that's, yeah. that's fun as well. And we are start traveling now again. Yeah. So maybe we have not, we try to get this monthly in every language. Yeah. So but we will be back this autumn in August. Uh, exactly. We have been planning for different episodes. If you have requests of what you would like to see in the future, please email us to support at tormac.se and we'll try to come closer when we can't get close to you. No, exactly. Thank you, Victor, for bearing with us as well. And especially a big thank to all you, the viewers. Have a really great vacation and a nice summer, and we see you this autumn. Stay safe. And sharp.